In this Photoshop design tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to design a simple alphabet logo in Photoshop. So, hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in today's tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to do this very simple alphabet logo in Photoshop. Again, we're going to work again here with a background, some adjustment layers on color for desaturation, then again some custom shapes, two or three different fonts, and lastly another custom shape as well. It's a super easy tutorial and anyone can design this type of logo. Also before I start I just want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers here for the recent comments that I received from you guys. Wow! Epic! Some of you guys really love the content and you know what? Thank you to you because you guys make YouTube a really special place and really epic to create tutorials for. So anyways let's get right away into the tutorial. So first of all what I did here on the right hand side you guys can also see again my layers palette here. What I'm going to do is quickly just unable everything so you guys can actually see that we started out just with the background then I've added some text and I edited those texts a little bit and played a little bit with the elements also made a final color adjustment and that's basically it. Also I've added a little bit of a blur effect here again onto the background but that's pretty much it. So let's get started and do that process as well. So first of all what I want to do is just copy this layer here with command J. I'm going to move that all the way to the top and also for you guys, I'm working with a Mac. For all of those who work with Windows, please press control when I say command. Alright, so first of all what I'm going to do is just open this and quickly say here the smart object filter. That should be off so you guys can actually see what the background looks like when it's original. And I'm going to say rasterize layer. And there we go, that will be our start right away. So a lot of you users out there, the viewers here ask me, where do I get these backgrounds from? You want to know what background I've used? You want to download my PSD design, shapes or brush files? Or you just want to improve on your Photoshop design skills? Then my 101 Photoshop design course is for you. This course includes 101 for beginner designers. Learn and design your own custom designs. All work materials are provided such as PSD, shapes and brush files, all ready for you to download and practice on. Over 60 lessons and all future updates are for free. If this course is for you, then simply click on the little info button on the right hand side, select the design course and receive a reduced $10 entry today. Well, mostly from graphicstock.com, so have a look on there are great backgrounds. Alright, so first step that I want to do now with this background to have it as a smart object again, I want to cl right click onto the layer here and just say convert to smart object. So in this way it's now a smart object and we can apply filters and throughout when we apply filters we can always go back and tweak those filters again. So the first one that I'm going to do is basically blur it. So I'm going to go to filter, blur and give that a Gaussian blur. Okay, and I want to blur this actually quite roughly, so somewhere around 6 pixels should work for this. I'm going to hit OK, and that's my first step again. So now you guys can see it's already blurred, and more focus will be again on the logo itself. You guys can also head over here and just minimize this box again, so that's out of your way, and you have more space again for your layers. Great, so the next step that I want to do is place my first text. Maybe that will be your brand name or your logo or whatever. For my case now, it's going to be just the A from the word or the brand name alphabet. So I'm going to write in capital letters A over here. And we first of all going to choose a different font. So again, I'm going to go with intro today. You guys can also find this again in the description down below if you want to find this font. Okay, so it's called intro. I'm going to go work with regular. Yeah, that's fine with me. But I'm going to upgrade the font size quite a lot. Something around 180. Yep, that might be a bit too big, but let's have a look. No, not actually. Okay, and place that somewhere here in the center. And I'm going to go to view new guide and first of all I'm going to place here 50% horizontal guide and as well view new guide again and horizontal sorry I did vertical earlier 
50% and gonna hit OK. Great, so now if you're also completely new to all of this and Photoshop and some other stuff, have a look on the channel. I've created some more tutorials for all the beginners who want to learn how to do canvas sizes, what are these guidelines for and all of that stuff. So just have a look on the channel under the playlist Photoshop for beginners. Okay, great, so we've got the A now already. Next step that I want to do is also write the alphabet name, so alphabet if you guys get what I mean. All right, so let's also put the text tool again with T on the keyboard. And I'm just gonna make a nice big selection here and write again alphabet just with the last words. And they are way too big, so I'm gonna press Command A. Remember Windows guys, press Control A now so you can select everything and first of all take the font size down again. So something like that, alphabet. And I'm, I think I'm going to work actually with a different font for this. So I'm going to go back to the fonts here and work with Helvetica Neue as I mostly work with because I really just love that font, nice and slick and simple. You guys can also find that again in the description down below. Let's also work a little bit here just with our pixels. Maybe let's start out with 15. Okay, I'm going to hit enter there. Also my tracking should be zero. So let's have a look here on the right hand side. You guys can see I have a box called characters. And if you guys don't have that, simply go to window and just select character box over here and it will show up somewhere. And then you can just integrate it here into your workspace. Okay, my tracking here is set to zero. That's good. Then last step, just accept it. Take the move tool and we're literally just going to place it over here. Now again, you guys can see it has the same color so I can't see what's happening. So let's double tap here on the, to the layer that brings us back into the edit form and we're going to choose a different color. So let's go with white. Okay, great. So next thing that I want to do is maybe just thicken this up a little bit. So alphabet, I'm going to select first of all just the font. And now you have either two choices. Either you can go to the character box and thicken it here and make it nice and bold. But this is not the best way. Or you can go back to your font family over here and select again bold over here. Great, so that looks a bit better for me. Bolt, and I think my size, maybe I'm going to up that a little bit further. Well, you know what, 15 is actually good. I'm going to accept it, take the move tool, and literally place that again with the cursors just into the center. Great, so there we got that ready. We're going to do a next step now in a minute. First of all, what I want to do is finish up all the text, slogans, etc., what you ever have in your logo. Again, I'm going to press Command J now on this alphabet uh, text layer here. So Command J, Windows people, please press Control J. Okay, I'm going to move this down. And first of all, I'm going to put in the slogan of the company logo, whatever. So alphabet is basically the new Google in a way. So I'm going to type here search. And we're going to put a dot. I see that's trending quite a lot in a lot of designs at the moment. So that you have like three little words, search, dot, learn dot find dot or something in that way so I'm going to make find now first and then learn as well and dot as well maybe we can actually leave out the last one so search find and learn on alphabet okay last step that I was still going to do is press command a select everything again and I'm basically going to go back to my first font that I had from the a logo so that will be intro again over here intro and now I'm just fitting it that it works nicely underneath this A. So let's go with 10 for the start. I'm going to accept it, take the move tool and literally place it somewhere over here. Yeah, let's go with a little bit bigger font. So again, command A, select everything and I think I'm going to go with like 11 or 12. Let's have a look. 11, I'm going to go, maybe I'm going to play with the tracking also a little bit. So I actually want that the text should end right over here and right over here. So what I'm doing at the moment, as you guys can see, just with the move tool, simply go to the ruler here or over the ruler and drag out some guidelines. Again, there's more about that on the channel. If you don't have rulers, simply go to view and select rulers over here. Okay, so again, search, let's select all of that. And I'm going to stretch that a little bit further. That's too much again. Let's try if we type it 11.5. Okay, you have to put a comma there. Comma 5. Yeah, and that works perfectly for me. Great. Okay, so 11.5, comma 5. 
Okay, accept that. And with the Move tool, simply you can also hit V on the keyboard. So know your shortcuts. Very cool to know those. You can work a bit quicker in Photoshop. Great, so we've got that in there. What I'm also going to do is just go to View and clear the guides again over here. They're a bit of distracting. Okay, clear the guides. And again, next step that I want to do now is copy alphabet actually here. Or if we hit right click onto this. No, before I copy alphabet, I'm going to hit right click and say create a work path out of this. So now you guys can see if I'm zooming really closely, we've got this really hard edge here. So this basically means it's again, we already have a path around this. Next step that I'm going to do is go select the pen tool over here on the left hand side. Go inside of this path selection here and hit right click and say make a selection. So now we have selection. Okay, first of all, we still have to say feathering radius should be zero. Okay. And now what we can do is once we copy the A over here, we can delete this area from the A font. Let me show that to you guys quickly. So I'm going to go and du duplicate A now because maybe I still want to have the original font layer. So I'm just going to press Command J, duplicate this layer again, Windows, yeah, guys, Control J. And I'm just going to put here A again. Let's also select it so we can actually see what's happening. And I'm going to hit right click and say rasterize type. So now it becomes a completely normal layer, not a text layer anymore. And now if I repeat this step again with alphabet, hit right click, create work path. And now with the pen tool, hit right click again, make a selection, zero feathering. We've got a selection and a decent selection, which is with sharp edges. So it's not a bad selection. Then I head back to A and hit delete. Now we can see that only if we select the, the A font here, the A layer, that alphabet is standing out and it's really nice and sharp there. Okay, so now we have actually the background can shine through through this whole A font. You guys get the point. Okay, let's turn everything on again and we can switch off alphabet here. So now you guys can see what it looks like actually. And last step that I'm still going to do is here search, find, learn the text layer. Select the text tool again. And we're going to select everything and change the font color here to the same as we have from Alphabet. Okay, so from the A, from our main logo. Great, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Next up that I still want to do, maybe add like a little touch. This is just an extra. You don't need to do this stuff. Sometimes I just like to do it because Alphabet is kind of the new Google search thing. So maybe we should add a smart or basically a custom shape here just with a loop. So what I'm going to do is create a new empty layer from down here. We're going to go and hit right click here on our custom shapes and we can get back into our shape library here in the application bar in the top. So simply hit on this little arrow and now try to find a loop in your library. And I did so recently. I'm just going to go down a little bit. And if you're also looking for these custom shapes, you can either have the look on my channel, how to create your own custom shapes. Or again, if you want to, you can also search online for free custom Photoshop shapes. But believe me, building your own is just easier and quicker. Okay, so over here, you guys can see now that I found the loop. I'm going to select it. Let's double tap on that. And we've now selected the loop. First of all, what I want to do is go all the way here to the left side and go under fill. Select also the color chart. I'm going to pick the same color as we have in the A. Okay. And we can select that again. And now what I'm going to do is hold shift on the keyboard. So it's equally expanding again. Okay. Hold shift. And I think around this size should be good enough. Okay. Take the move tool. And literally on the new layer, we've created now this little shape over here. Then also last step, as you guys can see, we still have these lines here. They're a bit irritating the paths around the loop. I'm going to press Command H just to hide them. So again, you guys can see you hide them super quickly. Now again, one step that I'm going to do is just hold Shift on the keyboard. Select Search, Find and Learn Alphabet, the original alphabet and the first original text alphabet layer. And I'm going to press Command J together, create a new group, and this will be my design. Great. So now you guys can see everything in one folder. For the Windows guys, again, Control J, and you've created a folder as well. Now I'm going to take the Move tool and literally just move this up a little bit and place that a little bit better here in 
my center of the canvas. Okay, somewhere around there you guys can also again work with guidelines. I'm being a bit lazy again. Now, what I want to do is press Command J again to duplicate this whole design group. And now the reason why I did this is because now I'm going to hit right click here onto the layers and say merge group and create one flat um, solid image here that I have layer actually just with the design. So now I can play with colors and tones and all of that stuff. But I'm still keeping the original group here in case I need to change something or change the design completely. So next up that I want to do is double tap on here again get back into the layer styles and first of all what I want to do is go to color overlay and say white over here. Great. Okay, now we have a pure white. You can also still play with opacity, get different colors and different effects. I'm going to hit OK. And next up, I want to add a adjustment layer, a hue saturation adjustment layer. So back to the adjustments, hue and saturation over here. And let's make this a bit bigger so you guys can actually see what's happening. So just with the normal master colors here, color tones, I'm just going to take the saturation all the way down and now we have again alphabet in black and white really quickly. Great, last step, let's go back here to the background layer again. You guys can see it's still a smart object and if I want to blur that image a little bit more now or a little bit less, I can do so right away now without having to create a new background again from scratch. So simply double tap on smart filters over here that will take you back to the Gaussian Blur filter. You can also tap the Gaussian Blur, obviously. And now you can even blur this even more or even less. Depends on what you actually want. So that's why I create smart objects. Afterwards, once you're done with your whole Photoshopping process, you mostly know, okay, the background doesn't look too good. So change that again. I'm going to hit cancel because I'm pretty happy with this. Let's do one last step over here. I'm going to add a quick new layer take that all the way down to underneath our background layer, take the marking tool, select everything, hit right click inside of the marking, inside of the selection actually, go to fill and select black, okay, press command D, get out of the selection and now what I still want to do is select the background layer again and just take the opacity down a little bit more just to darken those highlights a little bit from the background layer. You guys can also obviously take an adjustment layer with the levels and play with that a little bit, but for me, this is a bit easier. Last step, layer and hue and saturation, also all these layers actually. I'm gonna press Command G again and just write here, design two again. So yeah, that's basically it for this quick tutorial, guys. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit me up there with a thumbs up and support me. Leave any questions that you have down below in the comment box. I answer every single question and comment on YouTube. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe, share this with all your buddies, and thanks again for watching, guys. See you all in the next tutorial. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.